But first, uh, there's some recent polls out of Texas that have shown a tight race there. Now a major election forecaster has added that state to its toss-ups category. Real Clear Politics has now reclassified Texas and its 38 electoral votes as a toss-up. It comes as the latest CBS YouGov poll gives Donald Trump a three-point edge in the state of Texas, 46 to Hillary Clinton's 43 percent in a four-way race. Why are you shaking your head, Nick? Because she is never going to win Texas. Okay. Trump now has... <laughs> He's there right. It's not going to happen. Okay. Trump now has a 4.8 point average lead in Texas. A state Mitt Romney won by 16 points in 2012. Meanwhile, the new CBS YouGov poll in Florida shows Clinton 46% to Trump's 43%. A look at the partisan breakdown shows Trump's struggle. Among Florida's likely voters, Clinton is garnering 91% of Democrat support, while Trump is is taking 82 percent of Republicans, a partisan gap he is seeing around the country. The Associated Press finds that if Clinton gets victories in the states where she is currently leading comfortably, that alone would give her 272 electoral votes more than necessary to win. The Electoral College math has, uh, has the architect of George W. Bush's victories, Karl Rove, even saying he no longer thinks Trump winning is possible. Well, he, if he plays it inside straight, he could get it, but I doubt that he's going to be able to play it. He t has 186 electoral votes in states that he either leads outside of the margin of error um, that's, or, or is thought comfortably put away. Uh, that compares to Romney's 206. He would have to not only win two states where he is either only slightly ahead or behind by four, but he would have to pick up states where he is behind by at or above the national average. I don't okay. see it happening. Mike. All right. Well, so much for Donald Trump. This is, I mean, this is really? a little like, yeah, talking about Donald Trump's potential victories. Uh, it's victory not happening. The, it's a little like being Vin Scully. In the third inning of an April game, Dodgers against the Diamondbacks, and the Dodgers are up 26 to 2, and you got to fill airtime talking, you know, for six or seven innings. But you, Mika, <laughs> yes. and Joe Scarborough uh -oh. are both in the New York Times today. Why? A lengthy list, all the people, places, and things Donald Trump has insulted on Twitter oh. since declaring his candidacy for president. Quite an extensive list. Joe, if you could sort of. <laughs> oh there you go. Well, we're in there somewhere. There There's you go. Thousands of others. And Ben <laughs> and Michael Steele. Yeah. I want to ask each of you, how <laughs> proud of you are of your, your party today and your candidate? And what are these numbers? I mean, there's no pathway, right, Ben? Everything huh? is awesome. Everything is awesome. Okay. This is it's uh, working out just like we planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. What happens to the Republican Party after uh, after Election Day? What well, happens? The same thing that happened to the Democrats after Walter Mondale or George McGovern. I mean, the truth is, is that is that this election, if it goes the way the forecasts show, will be a bad defeat at the top of the presidential ticket. Yeah. There will still be a lot of Republicans out in the states. 2018 truly will be an awesome year, uh, just historically running against the, the out party in the White House. And What's really important is the down ballot Senate races because there is so much up and coming talent on the ballot for Republicans in the different states. Ben, you have been a pro ever since you were interning at the Boston Globe and you proved your it name. just again. But yeah. Michael Steele, let me yeah. ask you about another aspect of uh, what happens on Election Day in terms of there's a feeling among some that Donald Trump, endorsing Donald Trump, sticking with Donald Trump through in the course of this campaign, leaves a stain on several national Republicans. Do you believe that? And if so, how do they erase that stain? Can they? I, I think to some degree it does. I mean, there have been clearly some, some voices that have been caught in the crosshairs between uh, words that Donald Trump has said or actions he's taken and, and their defense of that, uh, while at the same time trying to create some separation uh, for whatever reason, whether it's to protect the Senate, the House, down ballot, something like that. But the reality of it is, when this race is over, there's going to be a great um, uh, upheaval, I think. A lot of Trump supporters uh, will be very, very um, 
very much full of recrimination, I'm sure, about you know the outcome of the race because you didn't support the nominee, et cetera. Uh, those voices, the, the never Trump people, are going to fight like hell to start, try to pull the party back together while they're going to try to pull the party apart. So I think Ben is exactly right that there's you know there's got to be a great uh, awakening and, and come to Jesus moment for the party after this election. But that would have been the case, Mike, if Donald Trump yeah. had won because you still would have had those forces uh, if he wins uh, who don't want him or don't see him um, as, a, as a viable uh, representative of the party, uh, still dealing with the internal struggle of who we are as uh, Republicans, those who do not want to consider themselves Trump Republicans, if you will, um, will very much be at odds with that Trump administration. I just don't understand, though, why ultimately anybody thought this was going to work, not doing what is the right thing. I mean, there are there are things that are right, there are things that are wrong about what candidates say and do, how they act and how they behave. And it's not like this is a big surprise. I don't, I don't know. I still don't understand. Uh, in fact, well, Michael Steele, go ahead, Harold. Well, I think, you know, three or four weeks ago, I think an argument could be made that he, that Trump had found a lot of traction and he had found, found some resonance with, with the country. But there were basic and issues. No doubt about it. There were a number of basic issues, but he's, his, there were basic issues from the outset when, right. when, when he started this campaign. But you find yourself now, three or four weeks later, with the eruption of a, of, of, of a tape with him and a, a young fellow on a bus talking about uh, women in the most horrifying and terrible of ways and then a number of uh, allegations against <laughs> him, then you compound that with all of the challenges in the campaign. But three or four weeks ago, he was in route. You had Senate candidates, Republican candidates way ahead. It yeah. looked as if the party was going to consolidate around him. And now three or four weeks later, things have changed it's dramatically. Just, I guess the question I have for Ben and everybody around the table, if he loses narrowly to Michael's point, I could easily see Trump making the case to McConnell and to Ryan, who he now is more popular than the party, that had you guys just embraced me, I would have won, which I think in yeah. some ways could make it. I understand uh, Mr. Ginsburg point I used to work for Mr. Ginsburg many years ago at, uh, <laughs> as, as a young lawyer when you were working as a young lawyer but he um, it would seem to me he could call for the resignation of those leaders saying look had you guys been with me this might have been a different outcome in this yeah. race and my Republican Party is the future is that a concern yeah. not to cut you off Megan, but yeah, is that a concern no, no. on the part well, of Republicans it, at this anytime point anytime there's a narrow victory there's always could you have done more and that will be especially true this time what we're talking about 14 days out from the election is not a narrow victory. So right. I've put that more in the hypothetical and more in the, I think what we'll see is more the purgative circular firing squad for a while. Just right. seems Which like be he good bullied Hillary. his way into the nomination and then bullied his way close to the presidency and an entire party was bullied. By, by somebody that isn't even a Republican. I well, also don't he get won, it. No, we'll, we'll wait, but, but also he won the nomination. He won the nomination. Right. The voters so picked him. And, and, and the problem for Republicans, I would say, is that he has shown that there is a constituency for his kind of politics in right. the party. It's not going to go anywhere. That's the real obstacle. And can there be a leader within so the party? So he that starts, to, them, he starts to lose. Line. And does Paul Ryan then say, I don't endorse? I mean, no, no, look, the guy's look. lost. Com uh, hasn't he? How do you have any credibility as a leader? That same fault line goes to the Democrats as well, who will face their own issues with the Bernie <coughs> Sanders wing. So you can you can pay some attention to the credence that in both parties there's a popular movement that both parties are going to have to be able to deal with over the course of the next four years that will get resolved in the in the 2020 or 2024 nomination process. So, so Sam, let me ask you about that aspect that Ben just raised, uh, sure. the Democrats. Uh, I have seen, and I think you and your coverage of this has seen too many Democrats, top Democrats, uh, and Democratic constituencies, uh, their, their people, look down upon Trump voters as if they're just one bulk, one definable bulk standing together. But they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a huge percentage of Trump supporters, Trump voters, whose needs ought to be addressed by the Democratic <coughs> Party, have yeah. not been addressed by the Democratic Party. What do the Democrats do? Well, are you saying that some people in the Democratic Party see Trump voters as deplorable and irredeemable? Yes, yes there th that exists. Um, but if they're smart, they'd recognize that uh, where Trump is actually doing well, one of the few areas he's doing well, is among you know those union households, those white working class households that have. 
felt sort of economically depressed in the wake of these trade deals. And the question, sort of the existential question for some Democrats is, how do you reach back to this coalition, or is it completely gone? Are we looking at a modern Democratic Party that's right. made up of different demographic groups? Um, you start with policy, honestly, and, and Clinton, the onus is going to be on her after the election. Uh, how much, if at all, does she pivot back towards the middle, which we all assume is where her instincts lie, to be sort of a moderate on domestic policy. I have a feeling uh, that we sort of overstate her tendencies to be a moderate on domestic stuff. She's a hawk on foreign policy, but she has a very good liberal streak on domestic policy. But, you know, this is all going to happen in the lame duck. Will yep. Barack Obama move the TPP? So, Will he wait for her? You know, things like this are going to determine a lot yeah. of the future of the Democratic Party. And, and looking ahead, I still, you know, I, I marvel at how uh, Republican leaders uh, in Congress in Washington didn't see this coming. And there is definitely a growing belief among members of Congress that if Trump keeps this close, Paul Ryan will lose his speakership. So just keep that in really? mind if Trump loses. Um, just, and, you know, we said it when we heard the endorsements. We said it right here in real time. <coughs> this is not going to pay you back. It never will. It never did. You got nothing for it. And ultimately, I think it's going to hurt top Republicans. 